Hey mate, I'm Alex. And I'm Gaston. Welcome to Power Mate. This is a place to learn and share about Fabric and Power Platform. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this channel with your friends and colleagues. Welcome back, Power Mates. Today we are diving into Power Apps and discussing the five most common mistakes people make when start using the, this kind of powerful tools. Of course, Power App is uh, fantastic for creating custom business applications, but there are some pitfalls to watch out for. So let's get started. Mistake number one, not planning your app structure. It's tempting to jump right in and start, you know, building, but without a clear plan. So you can end up with a messy, an inefficient application. Yeah, that's a good point, Alex. Uh, remember, take some time to map out your apps, the flows, the data sources, and user interface. Think a little bit about your user journey and how they will interact with your app. This will save in the future a lot of headaches down the road. Yeah, exactly. And a good approach is to sketch out, you know, your app on paper or using a wireframe tool or something. So this helps you to be visualize the layout and the functionality before you start building. But also stay tuned for the new planner feature recently presented on the Power Platform conference, because that is going to save a lot of planning time. That's great. Uh, let's go and dive into the mistake number two. So this is ignoring kind of performance optimizations. Power App can slow down if you don't optimize your data sources and formulas. So that's the next level. Yeah, right. This is one of the most common error and pitfalls. You know, one common issue is not using delegation properly it's because delegation allows Power App to handle large data set efficiently by delegating the data processing to the data source. Let's say a SharePoint or SQL, or there are different data sources that can be delegated. There's are all others data sources that you cannot delegate, but yeah, try to delegate when you can. Also use collections and variable Weasley and, and avoid unnecessary data calls. For example, if you need to use the same data multiple times, store it in a collection instead of make making repetitive calls to the data source. You know, this is a super uh, good example to uh, use the collections. The mistake number three, maybe it sounds pretty logic to you, but overcomplicating the user interface, you know, a clutter uh, UI can confuse users and make the app difficult to navigate. Yeah, this is kind of a remember all the time to keep it simple and intuitive for the end user. Use consistent design elements and make sure your app is always user friendly. Remember that sometimes less is more. Yeah, exactly. And use the start and controls on the layout that users are familiar with, you know, the like a combo box or a checkbox, you know, you use this kind of, of controls. This reduce the learning curve and make your app more accessible to Let's go to the mistake number four. So not testing thoroughly your app, skipping the testing phase can lead to many bugs, issues that could have been easily fixed. Yeah, test your app on different devices and with different user scenarios. Get the feedback from actual users to catch any problems early. Yeah, also consider using, you know, tools like the Power Apps Test Studio for automated Sorry. testing. It can help you identify issues and ensure your app works as expected. Yeah, exactly. And finally, mistake number five. Uh, Neglecting security, you know, it's crucial to ensure your app and data are secure, uh, especially if you are dealing with sensitive information, of course. Yeah, remember that, you know, use uh, role-based access control and make sure your data connections are secure. Always follow best practices for app security, like encrypting data and using secure connections. Sometimes it's a matter of, you know, you're going to be facing just a checklist from a security team, you know? Yeah, and 
you know, as usual, regularly review and update your app security settings, stay informed about the latest security threats and how to protect against them. Then there you have it, folks. Five common mistakes to avoid when using Power Apps. We hope you find this video helpful. If you did, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tutorials. So if you have any question or topic you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and join us on this journey. Together, let's unlock the full potential of Power Platform and Microsoft Fabric. See ya.